Hello, my beauties. How's everyone doing today? Um, I am going to talk to you all about fasting and herbalism because I just completed a water fast and I had a lot of questions about it. And so I wanted to get on here and talk about fasting, herbalism, why should you, all the different questions that I was asked, and then kind of what I did and what my protocol was. And so, um, yeah, and then I'm going to share the herbs that I drank uh, for the fast. So what is water fasting? Hello, hello, hello. So for those of you who don't know, every year for Thanksgiving, I fast. I typically do just like a day. I don't normally eat anything. And this year I had extra time after, and I was returning from a pretty big trip. And so I was like, okay, this is a great time to be able to allow myself to have a relaxation, a time to just be and to focus on myself. And I wanted to integrate my experience and my journey that I took because it was pretty potent and pretty powerful. And I'm gonna share about it. It was me visiting in the Sierra Nevadas in Colombia with this tribe called the Arawakus who are connected with the Kogis and in one of my companies, Life Music Group, which we're changing the name to potentially Dragon Collective. They, we have cacao and it's part of the tribal, the tribe in Arawaku that we um, sell their cacao. And so it was a pilgrimage and a journey to see that and also to um, journey to a place called Nabusumake where not too many people are allowed to go. And it was so much information, so powerful, so potent. And then the traveling. And when I got back, I just felt as though it was a great time to be able to fast. And I had time for integration because as you all know, I really believe strongly in integration. And then I had, um, yeah, I had time for Thanksgiving. I had no plans. I think most people didn't even know it was back. So I had no invitations to anything, which was great. And so it was just a time for me to relax. And I would love if anyone, um, I'm also recording this for my um, newsletter people, but anyone who's on the live right now on Instagram, if you've ever done a fast, I would love for you to share in the comments if you have and uh, what your fast was about. And uh, so what I did this time was a water fast. And this is something that I've done before and previously. I've also done vision quests where I've done four days and four nights without any food or water and being out in nature and receiving a vision. And that was directed by an elder um, with, you know, fire attending. And it's a lot of a deeper experience that's more community driven. The water fast that I've done before, and this is a way of cleansing the system. So there's a couple things that I wanted to share about water fasting. And one is leading up to the fast, how I do the fast and what I decided to do this time. So this time leading up to the fast, what I do, what I typically do when I lead up to a fast is I start eliminating meat, dairy, and other type of things that I've been eating out of my diet a little bit before the fast begins. So I start to wean my body off of the things that I don't want to, that I'm not going to be eating and that I have been enjoying. So if you eat meat and you have dairy or gluten, these are three areas that you can begin to start to release and let go of those, um, those foods. And then I like to do nourishing soups. So as you know, I did this fast during Thanksgiving, which means it's cold. So you want to remember what season you're fasting in and where you are in your location. So if you live someplace tropical, going into a fast could be a lot easier. You could do juices or just water and you're going to be fine because the temperature is nice and it's amicable if you're doing it in the summer. This is also another time when the temperature is going to be on your side. If you're doing this when the temperature is cold, like I did in Thanksgiving, and we had like the biggest snow and a bunch of other stuff, you want to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success 
by um, when you're nourishing yourself to get into the fast that you are weaning yourself off of food, but getting yourself into like cooked soups, um, cooked meals that are nourishing and easy to digest before you get into the water fast. The next thing you want to do is you want to have water. <laughs> so the water you choose is very important. Some people think reverse osmosis or they think, um, what's the other one like, uh, that doesn't have nutrients. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking on the water right now, but what you want is like, what I like to do is high pH or spring water. You want a good quality water that you're going to use when you're doing the water fast, because that's what you're going to be drinking. Then you want to pick your duration, right? So distilled, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, someone said it, distilled, exactly, distilled water. Now, the thing about these waters is like, they don't have nutrients, but you could add nutrients back into it with like a little bit of salt or lemon or lime if you feel called to. I personally like to just go with like a high pH or a spring water that you think is really good quality and, um, and, or if you have like really good filtered water now take into consideration, this is a water fast. This is not about like <clears throat> destroying your insides, destroying yourself or like trying everything to be so perfect. This is more about, um, your body having a rest right? A rest from eating, a rest from having all the things that you're bringing in normally in food and nutrients. So like I said, you're prepping up to the fast. This is very important. And prepping is not only food, but prepping is a mindset. So if your mindset is not in a place where you're ready to fast and you don't think you can sit down for three days and not do anything or allow yourself to rest, then it's not time to fast. You really want to be doing this when you feel as though you have the time, the energy, and the support that you need. Um, so this is why I did it during Thanksgiving, because I know that like I'm not going to be celebrating Thanksgiving. It's a day off. No one's asking anything for me. Then there's Friday, right? And everyone's doing whatever they do on that Friday. And then Saturday, Sunday, Right. So I had a weekend that it led up to. Um, so that's what I really focus that energy on. So then you have the water uh, and then you want to be drinking this water because that's what you're going to be drinking. Now, this time for myself, what I did is I created a tea and a tincture that I had because I wanted to also support my liver, kidneys and digestive system in the fast in um, allowing those systems to get a good flush as well. And one of the things that I'm really big on is not like a hardcore cleanse where like my body is getting completely stripped. I'm thinking of how am I gonna nourish and the nutrients I can put in. And so what I did for this herbal blend was dandelion root and leaf, alfalfa leaf, marshmallow leaf, calendula and chisandra berries. And so what happened is I use both the root and the leaf because the root is really good for the liver. The leaf has a better uh, indication for the kidneys. Alfalfa leaf has a lot of minerals and nutrients. So anything I wasn't getting in my water, if it was like high pH or like a spring water, that's not that great. Or if you can only get distilled water, then having something like alfalfa where there was like minerals and nutrients that I could put into my body, then I put that in as well. And marshmallow leaf is really good for the, um, for the kidneys. And it's also mucilaginous. So it's going to instead of drying me out, which I don't want to be too dry, uh, while doing the water fast, I have, uh, nutrients coming in then calendula because it's winter where I am returning to winter and calendula is warming in the first degree. So it's a gentle warmer, a gentle digestive system, gut flora rebuilding. It's good for convalescence. So healing from anything that's been going on for a while. And so while the gut is attempting to cleanse things out and let go of things, the calendula is going to nourish it. It also has a little bit of like a warming mucilaginous quality rather than being extremely drying. And then you have chisandra berries, which is a five flavor fruit. And so it's got salt, sweet, salt, um, sour. Uh, oh my God. 
blanking on all the flavors right now. Bitter and uh, I said sweet, salty, bitter, uh, like sour. Um, I'm missing one, but it's it's such a good herb. And then it also really helps with keeping um, fluids in. So it's a little bit of astringent. So that way I could keep, and I put just a small amount of it, but that way what I was drinking in water was not only like, going through me and cleansing, but also nourishing my cells and my body by actually staying in there. And then on the sidelines, I decided to do a tincture for myself. And that's only because the tincture for me was just like the next step. And it was like, a, I did the tincture leading up. I did both the tea and the tincture leading up to the water fast through the water fast and post the water fast. So it was something that my body was already acclimated to a couple of days before the fast began and then kind of rounded the fast out. So that way throughout the whole thing, I had one integrative herbal um, uh, preparations that were kind of nourishing me and holding me down. And so in the tincture, one of the more like actual cleansing herbs that I did, that's a little bit more of a heavy hitter. I did milk thistle, cleavers, angelica, and red clover. And so the milk thistle is really for the liver. The cleavers is kind of the, um, was a lymphatic system. Angelica is like a really bit good bitter, but I really did angelica because when I do fast, I really want, um, I really want to be like calling on my guides and my ancestors. And like, I have also a spiritual essence for it. And so Angelica was one of those, like it's bitter, it's great for the liver, it's oily, it's going to be nourishing, but it's also going to call in my guides and my beings that are going to like support me. And then red clover as well, which is really good for the blood as a cleanser. So it was just a very gentle cleansing herbal preparations that I chose to use in my water fast. And then, um, yeah, and then you just drink water. And what I do through the fast, there's all different ways I've done it before. One time I've done it where I've completely disconnected from technology, from everything and everyone and did nothing and rested. So that's one way that you can um, maintain your water fast. Another way of maintaining the water fast this time, what I did was I allowed myself to be able to have technology because I wanted to do it in a sense that was like cleansing myself out, but also allowed myself to be able to integrate from all of the, um, the work I had been doing the whole year of like what I had learned and the processes I've gone through. And if you've been following me at all, you know, that this year has been a very like, potent surrendered year. And so there was a lot that I have gained in information and knowledge that I wanted to uh, really uh, take time to bring together. So I did a lot of journaling. I wrote a lot. So I was, and then I just wanted to make sure that things that I really care about and uh, things that I share with you all, like my website and my newsletters and my offerings were kind of tied in and, and updated and reflected who I was through all the changes. So that was part of my process. I ended up actually extending it two days and did five day water fast. And so this was the first time I did a five day water fast. I've done three days. And as I said before, I've done vision quests where I've done four days and four nights with no food or water. And the five day water fast was potent. It was super potent. So what typically happens for me is the first day is tends to be kind of like okay, I'm not eating whatever I've had before. My system is still there. So I'm not like at dire straits. Then the second day I tend to have a little bit harder of a time where I'm like, oh my God, I really want food. Um, or I just really am wanting some kind of nourishment or my patterns around food and desires show up and I want to like feed them basically. So even if it's not like necessarily food, it's like, I want to feed my body and myself, these like patterns that I'm used to doing that. What I found this time are patterns that keep me away from operating in my highest 
And that could be whatever that is for you. You know, like it doesn't even have to be, um, you know, food. So then the third day for me, since I'm not a big water drinker and because I'm going to drink some water, because sometimes I forget to drink water. I am actually, I don't drink that much the first two days. So you'd think I'd be like thirsty and drinking tons of water. And, but the third day is when I actually get really thirsty so this is the day that I end up really chugging a lot more water. And so that's why I continued into the fifth day because one, I had the time and two, because I um, really got thirsty on the third day and finally felt like I was finally drinking the water. And so I was like, let me just continue this fast because now I'm finally drinking water and I'm doing the water fast. So it took me three days to get through three gallons, no, to get through two gallons of water, which is kind of not like probably the best, you know, but again, this is personal, right? This is my personal experience. What you want to be doing is drinking water. And if you're a person who loves drinking water, you'll find yourself drinking a lot more. I highly suggest if you're doing a three-day water fast to have a, a minimum of four to five gallons of water available for you, ready to drink so that you're able to drink that. So you want that best quality of water of a minimum of like five gallons. You could do more um, depending on your water intake that you're already at. And also this is really good for people who forget to drink water. I mean, uh, since my water fast, I have not forgotten to drink water. I've like praise water. I'm so excited about it. And it brought a brand new relationship with me and water. So I did four and five. Now what happened is, is by Day four, I really started to feel depleted. So this is why it's important that you have support. You don't really have to do much because by day three and day four, you're really gonna be super tired. I'm super tired on day two. Like that's a day that I really end up resting a lot. Day three, I have a little bit more energy. Day four, I had less and wanted to sleep again. And day five, I got up that morning, I attempted to do my yoga practice. I did a very light yoga practice. I did a light yoga practice throughout the whole time, but day five was like super light. It was like just breathing and like a little bit of stretching on my back. And then I realized I needed to just like go to sleep. Day five was also the day that I was preparing myself to break the fast. So this is just as important as going into the fast. This is the part that I think is the most important because you don't want to just like go right back to everything that you were doing before the fast. Sometimes I think it's easier to go from like a hundred to zero when you are um, coming into the fast. It's not the ideal is not the highest, I think, but it's something that you can do. Whereas when you are breaking the fast, this is when it's super important to be prepared. So what did I do? I had a lot of different herbs and spices and vegetables ready to go. And I put them in a slow cooker in the beginning of day five. So I was really like kind of tired. And I spent the morning just like putting like peppercorn, reishi mushroom, uh-oh, hopefully I'm still there. Uh, my manifestation alarm just went off. So hopefully I'm still here. Uh, so, so maybe someone can give me like hearts, thumbs up if I'm still here for those of you that are live. But yeah, so I, um, and I think I was zoomed in a little bit. Hey, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I had these, I had this broth where I made reishi mushroom. I put alfalfa, nettles, rose hips. Um, I had oranges in my fridge and lemons and a cucumber and some celery and carrots. Um, I had uh, astragalus root, um, peppercorn, black peppercorns, fresh turmeric, ginger. I put a, a star anise. Um, what else did I put in there? I said nettles and a little bit of calendula. So basically I made like a nourishing broth 
So I'm still thinking about like the herbs and the nutrients that I want to add. And this could be really like dependent on yourself. Some people like to break fast with a bone broth. I chose to keep it vegan and vegetarian only because I wanted an herbal after water. Um, and so I made this broth and I had it cooking all day for about eight hours. And then when it was done, I streamed it. And then in my one cup that I had for myself, I took a little bit of red miso paste and oh yeah, and I put some seaweed in it as well. And then I put a little bit of red miso paste in the cup and poured the broth over it and stirred it around so that I could get some of the like fermentation, sodium, because I didn't add salt to the broth. I just had veggies. And so this was kind of like my way of putting a little bit of sodium and salt into the broth. I stirred that up and I drank it warm. And that was the way that I broke the fast. So as I shared with you all in my water fast, right, I utilized an herbal tea and I made sure I drank that herbal tea warm because like I said, I was doing my water fast during the winter time. And so having things warm was really important. And also my water was room temperature. I wasn't drinking it cold. And if I was doing it in the summer, I would still drink it room temperature as well. So just wanted to put that out there. Uh, it's easier to digest and then it wouldn't make me cold because by the time I was on day five, I was feeling cold because I had not a lot of warmth and not food and, you know, those kind of things. So there was a lot of like wearing clothes and blankets and just kind of keeping myself warm. And I took, um, hot baths, uh, to really support my, um, my water fast. Um, did Epsom salt bath. And so it really, it's about a time of being nourishing. And this is why I included herbs this time in my fast, because it wasn't about uh, depriving myself of anything or not allowing myself to have what I needed. It was more about nourishing myself and giving my body and my uh, mind a break so that I could focus on what really mattered to me in the future and coming forward, how I'm going to like hang out with all of you all on Instagram or in my own newsletter and how I'm going to like continue to provide information for you all that I really care for, that I care about and that you all care about. Um, so that's fasting and herbalism. Oh, and then, so after I did the broth the next day, I had a, um, a blended soup, which was butternut squash, carrots, ginger, apple, um, and I blended all of that together and then drank that. Um, and so it wasn't until the third day of breaking my fast that I had added um, a veggie soup that I had made before to the actual butternut squash soup. And I was also using that big broth I made to add it to the soups that I was making, right? So it was all really nice and um, and warm and nourishing and easily digestible because that's what you want is easily digestible. So for those of you who are in tropics or you're going to decide to do it over the summer, you could have a whole melon or fruit. Um, so that's another way to break the fast too, is by like one fruit. And normally it's like a fleshy, juicy fruit, like a watermelon or some kind of melon or mango. Um, but a lot of the times I see it as like a watermelon because mango can be a little harsh on the body right away. So anyways, that's fasting and herbalism. The best thing though, that I did this time was work with the herbs. Like I felt really nourished. I felt really held. I felt really cared for. I felt like the cleansing went to another level. Um, and yeah. And so I wanted to share with you all and see if there's any questions about fasting, um, or anything about herbalism that you may have at all. Um, and wanted to put that up there and, and, and talk to you all about that. Um, and then in the meantime, while I'm waiting for any questions, if there are any, 
Uh, one of the things that I am really excited about that is open for enrollment is my Herbs as Teachers course. And this class allows you the opportunity to be able to work with one herb at a time and to do something similar where like it, it's not completely fasting, but you are going inwards with each herb and you're learning about them one at a time guided by me. And so then you're able to really like start working on that relationship so that when you become ready to do a fast or to fast and do an herbal dieta or plant dieta or what I like to call an herbal immersion, then you're prepared and ready and understand the techniques and the tips and the altar creations and the way of like sitting with oneself and the way of journaling and witnessing and picking up on those subtleties that the plants are here to provide. And something like a fast allows you in those times for being alone. So yeah, so I just wanted to share that Herbs as Teachers is going to be my program that is available. It starts in January. Um, we always do it um, after uh, the holidays and after MLK. So it's a great time to be able to get back on board for your health, your well-being, um, and nourishing yourself through um, post the holidays. Uh, so, and also just wanted to mention that sometimes fasting, this type of fast is a really good thing to do for the holidays, especially if like you um, really want to hone in on yourself or you want to do like a new year celebration where it's not like a new year celebration and you're not in the mood to like be in a party or be with a bunch of people. That's another great time to do it because it's a time when people are resting anyway, you might be on holiday. So just wanted to put that out there. And then the other thing is that if you ever have any questions about fasting or herbalism, please DM me or for those of you who are watching this uh, for my newsletter, give me a call or just give me a message. Like I'm really here for you all um, being part of this community and making a community for herbalists is like what's really the big deal here for me. And I've been contemplating about like creating like a telegram group or a WhatsApp group where we all can meet and talk about different topics around um, all the knowledge that I have for you all. So um, if you are interested in herbs as teachers, send me a DM or send me a message. And I haven't gotten any questions about fasting or herbalism. So if you have any and you want to uh, ask me, feel free and I will talk to you all soon. Ciao.